Welcome to the 10 Minute Treasure. My name is Jeff Pospisil. And as I was paying bills the other day, I thought, you know, this might be something helpful to show somebody that wants to start paying their bills electronically in QuickBooks Online. So I, I started with a brand new vendor, somebody that I'd never set up before that I paid electronically using QuickBooks Online, which partners with Mailio. So that way it's free, 100% free. So that's my favorite word. Plus, it's automatic. I don't have to print a check. I don't have to put it in an envelope. I don't have to put a stamp on it. So I save all that and I don't get any fees. And a kind of a bonus too, is it sends an email automatically to who I'm paying to let them know, hey, your payment's coming. So they don't have to wonder about that and they don't have to uh, wonder what this uh, amount is hitting their bank account. So everything is great about it. So let's go ahead and show it to you. All right, so I received a brand new invoice and I'm just gonna show you the process that I would go if I wanna set up a vendor and then pay them electronically. So pay them through ACH. So uh, we just have a, a pretty brand new vendor for Belay. And here's their details, which I'm gonna go ahead and add in there. And then also they include this pay with ACH. If you wanna pay, so I tried to use this link and I tried to pay through ACH on there, but they didn't recognize my bank. So I had to pay with credit card. Well, they charge you extra when you pay with credit card and I don't wanna do that. So what I decided to do is I decided I'm gonna go ahead and um, go ahead and pay them through ACH right through QuickBooks. And that might be how you set up anybody. So one of the things I wanna show you first of all, before we get going. So let's just say you have a regular volunteer or maybe you have a company that um, doesn't have their bank information right on there, but you want to collect it. Let me go ahead and pull up a form that I'm going to share with you. And I stole it from somebody else. So it's this direct deposit, uh, direct deposit uh, authorization form. I'm going to drag it over to here. And so here it is. And what I'll do is I'll make it generic. Right now I have it for this client, Upper Midwest in there. But they just fill in their name, address, city, state, zip, uh, bank stuff, whether it's checking or savings. And then they do some kind of a signature. I had that in the way so you wouldn't be able to see the Belay's bank account information. And actually that's where I got it from eForms.com. They seem like they're excellent. I'll make this generic and ready for you to use. And let's go back to it. All right, so I'm in QuickBooks. And the one thing I wanna do, first of all, is I wanna just see how much it'll upload. If I, if I get an invoice from somebody regular, if I drag that invoice into here, how much it'll automatically do for me, because that would be awesome. So I drag that in there and it is processing. It may take up to five minutes. It won't take up to five minutes. Um, all right, there it took, what did that take a minute? Created by me, description, and I'm gonna go ahead and create the bill. I should, probably should have looked at that closer. I should have reviewed it. I don't even know why I didn't review it. Anyway, so let's go ahead and um, so it says it's to pay it to Jeff Pospisil. Actually, I don't want to pay it to Jeff Pospisil. I want to do a new vendor and I want to base it off of that bill. So on the side screen, what I have is I have that information on my other screen. So uh, Belay, actually that's all capitals, Belay Solutions, LLC. They do have an email. And it's always good to uh, go collect all this stuff because you're probably going to have a day when you need to contact them and you just want to have that information readily available. I don't know if I have an account number, but I do have an address. And you got to spell stuff correctly if you wanted to go to the right address. So, by the way, we chose Belay. Um, we, we have a very decentralized um, 
uh, system here. So to have a remote worker, or they call it a virtual assistant. Well, that kind of makes you think of AI, but it's really not. It's just uh, somebody that's working remotely, which is how all of us are working. So, all right. And I've tried this before. They gave me the ACH payment stuff. I tried using this. It doesn't help you. So don't use that. If, um, if it's somebody that you're going to have to do a 1099 for, uh, then you are going to want to collect their social security number or tax ID. And then what I normally do is I have them fill out a W-9 and then I can go ahead and upload that as an attachment. So whenever I have somebody do a, a, a W-9 so I can collect their tax information, I go ahead and upload that there. Also, if they do that bank authorization form, I upload that there. That way I have everything in one place. Um, somebody can go into QuickBooks and they don't need access to all my files. So I'm going to go ahead and save that. So then it fills all that in. And from the invoice, it says date issued is November 1st, due date, November 1st, bill. So all that stuff is filled in already. And I'm just going to throw it into, I think that might be where I'm throwing it into is the payroll part. I, Really need to update my chart of accounts for this. I just have not done that yet. Um, actually, it's administrative support is what I've done. So I guess I did do that. So $2,600. And now I'm going to go and save and schedule a payment. So this is a brand new vendor. And it's going to process. And this does take about a half a minute, maybe a minute. Always seems longer when you're waiting. This is going to actually automatically sync with, um, what is it, Melio? Melio payments. So I'm going to put that up here on the other side. I'm not logged in yet. So here it is. So it's saying pay it. What do you want to pay it? I already have my bank account set up. So I'm going to keep that there. And I'm just going to go ahead and continue. And then it says, how do you want to pay them? Do you want us to do a paper check? So if I didn't have their bank information, I could pay $1.50 and do a paper check, which actually isn't that bad because the stamp is what, 60 some cents? Uh, envelope and check stock also cost. So, but I'm just going to do bank. And now they ask me for the, the bank account information. If I would have entered it in already, they would have still asked me. So that's why it's not worth it doing it. So I'm going to pause it while I enter in the bank account information. So another good reason to get Judy's 10 key is you can put it right in front of everything. <laughs> um, if you, that, I just announced that in my last video that I use it. So I go ahead, go ahead and I hit it. And now I'm gonna remove Judy's 10 key. Um, yeah, I and I think it's fine if I pay it November 6th. Um, I don't think there's that big of a rush. So I'm just gonna go ahead and hit continue. And again, it's free. Invoice number. I like that that's on there. That's going to be on the memo. What they There's going to be an email that goes to me to let it know that it's being paid, but also to that invoice, uh, th what I had on there, also to that email address that I put into their file, that accounting at belaysolutions.com. I'm going to go ahead and hit OK. One last chance to review everything. Just to make sure, 2600 your bank account, <laughs> this this person's bank account, no fees. That's what you want. And I hit OK or whatever, continue. And now it says you're done. It's done. They're going to be paid. They're going to be paid, it's scheduled on November 1st. They're going to get an email saying, hey, a payment's been initiated and it'll arrive on November 6th. So I'm going to hit done there. If I wanted to, I could add bills here, but I don't, I'm not going to. If I wanted to see bills that I've already had out there, I could see that here. I could also see the ones I've already paid that have already been sent. You can see some of them are in tra transit. So you have some of them just have not been received, but some of them have. So you could see the status there. And then I'm going to hop over to the Melio side. I'm going to zoom in a little bit. Because sometimes you could do this. So sometimes what I've done is I've set up a vendor and I've set them up in the Melio. I've set them up here. 
but you can see already, here's my vendor that I set up over in QuickBooks. It's already synced in, but not all my vendors are synced in, just the ones that I paid electronically. So here they are. And if I click on them, it'll show me a little bit more. But sometimes what I've done is I've went over here and let me see if I can click on one. I don't know if I have one that'll work. I think all these ones are set up. So if I had a brand new vendor, there's an option here to go ahead and request their. So I'm on, on this one for Dave. And I can go ahead, if I already didn't have his bank account information, I could go ahead and send a request through Melio that would have them fill out that form. So I wouldn't have to send that form back and forth. Um, either way is fine. Most people I think that I'm dealing with are more comfortable with that PDF form than they are getting an email from this Melio. So two last things. I'm going to show you what it looks like on the on the vendor side. So I'm so I submitted reimbursements and I got a payment. It's going to go through today. It hasn't gone through already yet. But anyway, I get it, this notice. Upper Midwest Global Methodist Church sent you X amount of dollars. And it's going to say it's related to the, these invoices. You can see actually I paid them. Uh, a belay solutions one that's that belay solutions um invoice number so i paid it personally because i didn't have this set up yet and then on the bank side so i could actually see this i wonder if i should hit track payment I hadn't planned on doing this, so I'm curious what they're gonna show. So it's gonna say, yeah, it's delivered. If I check my bank account, it doesn't yet show up and that just might be my bank. Um, so I would wanna check it the next day for sure. But here was one I did recently. And again, it says upper Midwest, um, it says GL six bills. So it, it does give me, I was reimbursed for six different, different uh, expenses but it says upper Midwest, it would have said Global Methodist Church here. So that's what it shows up on, on the, if you're on the receiving side, it clearly identifies it. So really cool, totally worth it. And again, it's free to do these electronic things. The only thing that takes a little bit of time is to actually collect that banking and account information from the vendors. All right, that brings us to the end. If that was a help to you, I encourage you to like, subscribe, share, comment, all that good stuff. And speaking of subscribing, on this last slide, I usually put my logo up there, jctaccounting.com. So this is really a ministry of that company. And if you go to jctaccounting.com, that's just my blog. And if you want to, you can subscribe there and you'll get an email whenever I put out a new blog post, which always includes the video. The other thing is, I, uh, the other, I have another logo here, the Global Methodist Church one. So I'm employed by the Global Methodist Church. This is separate from there. Hopefully it's consistent with everything. Uh, I always want to put that up there because some people will tie me automatically to the Global Methodist Church. But if you want to get official Global Methodist advice and the resources, go to that website, globalmethodist.org. All right, till next time, God bless.